Hey, everybody, and welcome to the Blizzard Watch podcast. I'm Matt, your host. With me this week is Joe Perez, my co-host, and we're going to talk about stuff, uh, various things happening in the world of Blizzard Entertainment and its many games. First up, Joe, how are you doing? I am doing actually pretty good today. Pretty good. Not I'm glad to hear it. Yeah, not feeling too bad. How about yourself? Uh, I had a really weird conversation yesterday uh, with my doctor, one of my doctors. So, yeah, things are where they are. But um, today we're going to talk about not me and not about me having phone calls with doctors, but about patch 9.1 for World of Warcraft. The uh, Shadowlands expansion is about to get its first major content patch with patch 9.1. We, we found out today that within a couple of weeks, 9.1 is going to hit the PTR. And that's pretty cool. We're going to get to see a bunch of stuff. There's a lot of stuff in this patch. Um, I'm trying to think. You, you, you know what that's in it, or do I have to actually go look this up? Uh, I'm looking it up right now because I actually okay. have lost I've lost what, track of it. What I think I know of, because I wrote the post today, is flying is coming to Shadowland Zones in 9.1. You'll be able to get Pathfinder. Oh, yeah. There's the Mega Dungeon Taviesh, the, the, the one from the Brokers. That's that's coming in the in this patch. That's a five man, but you know you know how the mega dungeons work. They're five player dungeons. They they are really big, lots of stuff. Uh, similar to the Karazhan five player dungeon and the one from Mechagon in in uh, Battle for Azeroth. That's what this is going to be. But it's a broker dungeon. There's the Sanctum of Domination raid coming. Uh, so if you've been raiding uh, Castle Nathria and you want to get the heck out of there because you're really tired of looking at Sludge Fist, that's coming in the next patch. Um, also. The up they're coming with uh, the the Corthia World Zone, the one that is going to connect to the Maw. The Maw will absorb and it, it will drag Corthia in and absorb it, and we're going to get to go there and see yep. what's up with Corthia. Corthia, the That's, city of secrets. Yeah, and finally, they're going to be doing a revamp of of Torghast. Yes, I think that's everything. Uh, new Torghast content. Uh, all mouths all mouths will work in the Maw. Yeah. Okay. I think that's another thing. Uh, we're going to be getting new Covenant cosmetic armor sets, um, which I some people are really, really gun ho about. I actually really like the second sets for a lot of them. Uh, I think they're very, very cool. Uh, I think that we covered everything. So that's a that's a fair amount to test. As a result of the, the size of this patch, which is, I think, comparable to some of the bigger patches that's come out, I don't expect this patch before three months of PTR at the earliest. Which means since we know it's coming out sometime in early April, like the first couple weeks of April, I'd say early to mid-April, that's it's going to hit the PTR at that point. I don't see any way this possible for them to put this out before July. Mm -hmm. Because we're talking at the minimum, they have to have at least two months to test this stuff. Then when they find bugs, they have to implement the fixes to those bugs and then test them. So I think it's an outside chance of it even getting done in three months, and it's more likely to get it done in four months. But I'm willing to say three months because I'm, I'm an optimist and I like to make people happy. So my prediction is mid-July at the earliest for Patch 9.0. Uh, but Joe's here, so we can put him on the spot. What do you think, Joe? I honestly, I think that's a pretty good guess, honestly. Um, short of everything going smoothly with flying in the mounts and the new zone and everything and having an accelerated timetable, yeah, I think July is probably a good a good guess. Yeah, it just doesn't feel... To, to, to compare it to the last two expansions' first major content patch, Battle for Azeroth got theirs out, I believe, in about four months. Mm-hmm. And that had two raids. One of them was like a, big, a full raid. One of them was a like a two-encounter raid. Uh, and but it had various other things, whereas the Legion one basically was just activating stuff that had actually been put into the game with the initial expansion launch. Like the Nighthold raid was already in game; it was just turning on during the time that their first patch was running. Uh, Suramar changes, stuff like that, so they could get that one out in two months because it, a lot of the stuff was already tested. Whereas I don't think we're in a situation like that here. I don't see how we're gonna get this thing out before at least three months of testing. And I, I feel, I feel like it'll be four. I feel like we're likely to see this in August. And I know that that's not going to be popular. I know a lot of people like, no, it'll be June. There's no way. Uh, If they get it out in June, I will be incredibly impressed with them because that will mean that they, they did everything right. They didn't get any errors on the PTR and everything went smoothly, smooth as silk. And I just don't see that happening. Um, That's not pessimism. It's just, I, and it's nothing against them if they don't get it out that fast. They shouldn't get it out that fast. That's, this is a ton of work. But I could be wrong. 
And if it does come out before July, then, you know, great. Congratulations to them. I'm not even taking into account the fact that they're mostly working from home. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And that, that I think, is also another big delay. So even if things go super smoothly, there's that to contend with. I just don't see it before July. And I, I don't think any group should re- should be really counting on it before July. Yeah, I would tend to agree. It's one of those things that, like, while we all want it and we all want more content and we want, like, a lot of these changes now – uh, we're going to have to be patient, especially because any time, anytime you make changes like this or introduce new content, things can get volatile, uh, even in the best of times. So there's probably going to be a lot of bugs that they wind up in, in introducing. So, but yeah, it'll be good. I, I don't think it'll, I think you're right on the money though. Yeah. And I think in general speaking, in terms of this patch, this, it's not the biggest patch they've ever done, but it's pretty substantial. Um, Corthia by itself is going to require a lot of uh, bolts and nuts and bolts testing because it is an open zone. It's an open world zone, and it's one that they has not been in the game up to this point. So they're going to need to really like test it around it. And I, I mean, we just ultimately don't know what the limits are going to be here. I mean, the maw up to this point hasn't had mounts in it. Yeah, you have not been able to use a mount in the maw. That could create all sorts of problems that we don't know about until they start running the tests. I mean, keep in mind how many different kinds of mounts there are in this game. That's hundreds of those hundreds. One of them might have a weird issue and that they'll, they'll not know it until every single mount that they have gets tested. And I know that the internal, the internal testing does its best, but you don't know until you've run like, you know, PTR PTRs are important because you need to scale up what's going on. It's like this one kind of mount might not have a problem unless you've got five of them out at once or 15 of them out at once. And you won't know until you test that. And it's really very hard to test every possible variable. And that's why big scale testing like this is so important. But again, that's just me. I think that that's the most likely is going to be three months at the outset, more like four months. But, you know, I know they want to get it out. I think that they will make every effort to hit a three month window. Oh, yeah. And the thing is, we have to also remember, it's not March anymore. I mean, we as I'm recording this, it's March 30th. If you're listening to it live, it's March 30th. But the PTR won't even be out till mid-April. So April, like half of April, May and June, and then half of July, that the three months, that feels like it's actually already moving pretty quickly, quite frankly. It's just one of those things where, yeah, it means we're going to be in Nathria for another few months. And yeah, if, you, if you're tired of Castle Nathria, and I am, I could see that being a problem. It, it is a problem for me. I don't want to look at Nathria again. Um, I'll be up front. It, it is not a raid I'm particularly enjoying. Uh, not because it's bad, because I, we've been in here for a while. We've been in here for, like, what, six months? God, has it been that long already? Uh, well, three months. Uh, we started in November, I think. So actually four months. Yeah. But it, it'll be, like, seven, eight months by the time the raid new raid comes out. Yeah, it's been a while. But sometimes that happens. I mean, honestly, and, and I'll just say this piece and, and move on. Uh, two things. One, I know that it's not nothing that ever is released is going to be perfect because you can't test for everything, even with uh your even with your PTR testing, because players aren't going to do everything that could possibly happen in, in, until you widen yeah, player once, base. Once that it scales up, or yeah, yeah, absolutely. Have. Once it scales up, absolutely. Um, and two, the fact that we got a game at all when we did with everything that was going on in the world and as much content as we've had and tweaks that we've had so far, it's fairly impressive given the state of things and uh. Maybe the cycle will be a little bit longer than some people would like, but honestly, just be patient, folks. It's all we can do. But yeah, that's all I got for that. Yeah, and I think that pretty much covers it, and we can move on to doing some of those questions that we have. Uh, should we mention, I, I didn't, uh, should we mention oh, that Hearthstone got its new uh, expansion? Actually, yeah, you should. <laughs> Go ahead. Mention that, Joe. <laughs> uh, so actually, a lot of folks are actually very, very, very happy about this, uh, but there is a uh, new... Uh, Hearthstone uh, that's coming out as far as uh, it's I can't remember the name of it off the top of my head but it's uh, I think it's like what is it the Baron Pity I know you're in chat it's, you're gonna you're gonna toss it in chat in a second um, but it's there there's been a lot of stuff going on with Hearthstone that I know players have been Forged excited about Forged in the Barons by the way Forged in the Barons thank you um, like I knew it was unnerving. the Barons but I couldn't remember what it was I'm like why can't I remember this I was just looking at an article about it uh, but 
there's been a lot of unnerving of cards. They're put, introducing the new core set mechanic. Uh, they're doing a whole lot of stuff that are changing the game and making it, uh, in a lot of ways, we talked about this before, more accessible for players to come back, uh, more accessible for players to have a deck that doesn't get blown out of the water immediately while still introducing new content and new things. Uh, it's kind of cool. Like, it's one of those things that if you enjoy Hearthstone, I'm really excited for you because you got new stuff to, to play around with. So, but that's all I really have to say about that. I just wanted to make note of it because I know if we don't, somebody's going to be sad and I don't want people to be sad. Well, I mean, you know, if you also want to know the fact that um, there's now an, a new Overlord Sorfang cl- card for, for you Horde players. So there you go. It's a warrior card. It kind of <laughs> has the old resurrecting the old priest resurrection ability that they got rid of, but it's much more limited. So there you go. Sorfang deserves a card. I think even even us like hardcore alliance players can respect Sorfang, although maybe we could have had less of an entire expansion about how bad he felt about things. That that would have been nice. But nevertheless, I like Sorfang. So I remember I used to love watching people mind control Sorfang. My God, that was fun. <laughs> he would utterly destroy people. Like just just wipe them the heck out. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, he gets to be back in card form. Uh which is the pogs of, of World of Warcraft. I think in a lot of ways, Hearthstone is the, the pogs of, of WoW. And man, that's a weird thing to say out loud. And for those of you that uh, those of you that are maybe too young to know what those are, Matt's not talking about uh, the, like the pog champion mode or anything like that. He's talking about uh, these collectible discs that used to be part of a game that you would uh, basically buy as we were youngins. And they were just cardboard, but... For some reason, they were stupidly popular. Yeah, it's true. They were stupidly popular for no particular reason. Um, <laughs> since The Simpsons has been on for like 40 years at this point, just go through the 40 years of Simpsons and eventually you'll find jokes about pogs. And that's, it's like, it's like comedy archaeology. You can dig back to the strata of the early, like the late 80s, early 90s and see jokes about stuff that you nowadays be like, what are they talking about? My God, The Simpsons has been on forever. <laughs> Uh, but I think we're going to do some emails now, right? <laughs> yeah, if you if you have a question for the show, we have two ways for you to get it to us. Uh, the first up is to email it to us at podcast at blizzardwatch.com with the subject line podcast or Blizzard Watch, so we know it's for this show and not the other show. Uh, although I'm not above stealing questions from the other shows at times, although lately they're not getting a lot of questions either. So it's 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 like, you know, it's really just pit fighting down here to get questions for shows. Uh, but also... You can also use our Discord server if you don't want to send an email because you don't want to make Joe and I fight. Uh, you can go to Discord, and we have a Patreon Q and Podcast questions channel, so you can ask your questions there for either the Q or for the podcasts, and just specify what it's for so we know. Um, or you can go to our Q questions channel if you're not a patron, which you know we, we give first priority to patrons because they're how we have a show at all. But we do want to get questions from people who couldn't afford to be patrons because we get that that's not always feasible. And you can ask in the Q questions channel as well. And again, just just tell us what show it's for, if it's for Lore Watcher for this podcast, so we know uh, where to where to put it. And that's pretty much how all the ways you got to get us a question. So, if you have a question you want to give to us, get out there, ask us. We like having questions. It means we have stuff to do. Otherwise, it would just be me and Joe talking about bands, and we can do that. But I don't think you guys would be necessarily as entertained by it. <laughs> Possibly. Who knows? Uh, but our first question. Hello. I was pondering that expansion 10 is coming up. That's a big number. Do you think they might do a squish? Vanilla could be 0.5, Outland 1, Wrath 1.5, and so on. Not a serious comment, just something to play with. Suggle so kitten. I don't think they're going to do that. No. Nah. But I do think that in the future, we're going to see another squish like the one we saw squishing everything down to 60. Oh, yeah. Like, I've, I've been thinking about for this for a while, like, if they're going to do one every expansion. And I don't think they're going to do that. I think it would be too jarring for people to, to constantly, like, log on to the game and then, boop, I'm back to 50 again. I don't think people would like it. I don't think they want to do it. And plus, it's going to mean that item levels get crushed down, too, every time. So I don't think they're going to do it every expansion or constantly reset the bar back down to 50. But I do think at some point they will do another level squish. Um, probably not for expansion 10, or as I like to call it, the Mega Man 10 expansion. Um, but it is interesting to think about what they are going to do. In, like, World of Warcraft is going to be 20 years old in three years. Think about that and, for a minute. Yeah, and not only is it going to be 20 years old in three years, 
we're going to get another expansion probably in 2022. Mm -hmm. Because we've got this expansion late 2020. So we'll probably get another expansion in late 2022. That means when we get 2024, that will probably be the 11th expansion to World of Warcraft on the 20th anniversary of World of Warcraft. If they keep going with the expansion every two years. That is... I think interesting. You think about what the next expansion might be and the expansion after it. They're going to want to set up whatever the next expansion is going to be if it's going to be on the 20th anniversary of World of Warcraft. Yeah, and it's probably going to be a big to-do, right? Like, I mean, if I was making that decision, 20 years is a huge milestone. And yes, a lot of us that have been playing this game forever may not want to hear that number, and we may not be uh, willing to think that we've been you know, doing this for 20-some-odd years at that point, but that is a huge number. Like... Think about it. Super Mario, right, just celebrated 35 years last year, and there was a big event about it, a bunch of re-release of games, a bunch of things that happened right around that to celebrate 35 years of Mario. I can't see WoW, which is arguably as iconic of a game at this point. Uh, I would say that beyond like just sort of the the stereotypical console games, WoW really did help in usher sort of mainstream acceptance of video gaming to a, a large degree when it when it hit. And that's a big thing. And now to have 20 years of successfully being present there, regardless of how you feel about anything, that's huge. I would be very surprised if they don't take an opportunity to try to do something special for that, whether it's the uh, release date for the expansion, something with the expansion in particular, uh, or the content therein. Or if it's something like, I mean, me personally, selfishly, if it was something where they said, hey, by the way, we've been around for 20 years, uh, 20 years that we spent on these, you know, three continents, here's more continents, go explore. Uh, by the way, they're on the other side of the world. You didn't think this was it, right? Like something like that, I could see them doing some huge reveal or something like that, and it would be really cool. But I, I think they are going to probably do something special for 20 years. And that's coming up. That's like we are. We are officially three years away from that. Yep. We are officially one expansion away from that. Yep. So, yeah, I think 10 is going to be a big deal as expansions go, and I think 11 will be an even bigger deal because – and they might, for all I know, they might delay putting out the 10th expansion so that it happens during that year. I don't know. I don't think they will because I don't think they're going to want to sit around with, with Shadowlands for like two years from now. Gordy had it. Like, I don't think they're going to want to be like putting out the, the – you know the 10th expansion they don't want to wait three years to put that out so yeah i think the 11th expansion is going to be on the 20th anniversary and that's pretty interesting uh yeah it's just whew, this game's been <laughs> it, it, it's not the oldest mmo by the way uh in fact i played several mmos before wow but it is it's been a while yeah so yeah i think that pretty much we in all sincerity i don't think they're going to do something like an expansion squish because i don't see the point like squishing down so like we only have five expansions. No, we can we know you still have ten. We we just know you're using like half you're using decimals. That doesn't oh. we can still count, guys. Yeah, but it, it does raise a, an interesting question of what, what are gonna what are the breakpoints going to be? Because honestly, I'm not opposed to squish. I don't think it's a bad thing. When done right. Um and they definitely I gotta give them credit. While some things were wonky, it was way better than I expected it to be when when they did do the actual squishing. Uh I expected it to be quite horrible. Uh but it didn't. It, it wasn't. It was pretty pretty good overall. But where at what points do you do things get too big that you squish back down? And then do you squish level numbers again, or do you just squish item level? And th those are two very interesting questions, I feel like, because I don't know what those breakpoints become. And it's sort of like, because well, we as, we as like players the, have adjusted throughout everything, right? Like, Yeah. I mean, do you remember back when they did the first item level squish in Kata? Mm -hmm. I think that when it was Kata to Miss, I think that was, but I might, I might have been missed. It might have been uh, two Kata. I honestly don't remember. My God, it's been a long time. But I, I think that they, uh, they'll probably do an item level squish again before they do a level squish. Mm -hmm. Because item level squishes are easier to do. They, just, they don't actually require your character to change that much. They just squish the item levels. It was patch 6.0, by the way. Okay, so it was going into mists? Yep. Oh my god, it's, I, don't, you know, so I honestly can't remember. Oh god, uh, Warlords of Draenor. Was six. Warlords of Draenor. So it was going into Warlords. All right, yeah. yeah. 
there's just there is a lot to keep in mind. I don't think that they I think they know how to do it, and I certainly think that if they do decide to do another level squish, that they can make it work. But I don't see that next expansion because I feel like that's just not but, something they want to deal with yet. I feel like they're going to give it. Uh, the thing, the reason that they squished it down to sixty was to give themselves room to go back up. But I guess then the question becomes too, with the way that the leveling structure has been redone, does that change how it's viewed? Because right now you go through the previous expansions until you hit fifty, then you hit fifty to you know sixty and. The current one, right? Like I, I haven't leveled since the. No, yeah, f- yeah, you're right. It's you go up to fifty, and all you can pick which one on, unless yeah. you're doing your first time, right? But if you're doing a new character, you can basically go to one to fifty in any any expansion up to Battle for Azeroth, and then you go uh, fifty to sixty in Shadowlands. I don't know if they're going to put Shadowlands on the up to fifty tier, and then you know that because that's that's the question, right? Like how how does that change things? Because Previously, when we the the first squish and everything else, it was still the same level, and you still went through the same content. It was still the same uh, numbers of levels, sort of like careening up through uh, to get to one hundred and ten. And now, with everything pushed down and all that that sort of shifting, how many expansions do you go before you start folding them into the new leveling experience? Because I actually well, think it's a good setup. If they very well might say you can level one to sixty. In every zone, in every expansion, including Shadowlands, and then sixty to seventy is the new hotness. They could do that. I don't know. I have no idea what they're going to do. It certainly would make a certain amount of sense that as the new expansion is is announced, and we are like in the period where we're waiting for it to come out, that they could put it so that you can just level to sixty in Legion or level to sixty in Burning Crusade or what have you, and get to max level and then be ready to level from 60 to 70 in the new expansion. Yeah. And they I, could do, they could do it that way or maybe they won't. Maybe they'll just have you level 50 to 60 in Shadowlands. I don't know. And I think they've also been experimenting with, uh, outside leveling rewards as far as that goes to, because one of the big arguments over the course of the several years is that gaining a level used to feel like a reward, right? Like when vanilla wow was a thing, when burning crusade was out gaining those levels, they were slogs. They were not easy things to get at the time you ground, uh, at some points you had to like go hunting for quests or particular items or, or you just spent five levels in Silithus killing. Yeah. Yeah. Skinning them for that stupid <laughs> armor people were buying, and you just you didn't do anything but kill those things endlessly until you you got like four levels and could go do some other zone because there weren't enough quests. Not that I'm bitter about the mid forties and original World of Warcraft. Ah, uh, yes, or as I like to call it, limbo. Uh, but like those, when you got those levels, they were they were a really important reward. They were they were part of that carrot on the stick that kept you going. And yes, abilities were gated behind those levels, more a little more granular than they are right now. But that's not the only system in place anymore. The game has evolved so much from those early days that you can have rewards for players at leveling intervals that maybe not necessarily are gaining a level and still make somebody feel accomplished. And I don't know if anything will ever replace the euphoric uh, feeling that you get yelling ding uh, when you hit that that level. Or in my case, John Cena's music playing because that add-on is the best leveling add-on ever. Uh, I don't know if anything will ever replace that, but it's not as important as it used to be. And so they can do more things like it could be an expansion where they remember they played around a couple times with gaining five levels instead of 10 levels. Uh, it could maybe be something like that, or maybe it's something where they decide that they're going to do a squish every time we get to level 100. I'm really curious how that's going to play out. So. All right, I think that's enough on that one. <laughs> uh, our next one, uh, a chilly hello. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I just want to say this. Oh, Every ahead. time we do the mail for these episodes, I worry that we're going to run out of questions. <laughs> and then every time we do, we spend half an hour on a single question. I'm like, oh, yeah, no, we're fine. Yep. So, yeah, there you go. Uh, I hope I'm doing this in the right ones. Uh, do, 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 do. This one, a chilly hello. I've been trying to level the, uh, the mission table followers, but it's slow going. Other than the bonus XP missions, you don't seem to get much. At what point do the quests go gray? For example, if I send level 30 followers on a level 12 task, does that give XP? What's to border or what's the border lines? And I don't see a name associated with this one because the first one was Suggle and the next one is Uya. So 
whoever's question this is, apologize. But I don't know. I don't do a whole lot with the mission table. I'll be I'll be flat out honest. I kind of hate it. <laughs> um, I, I hate's a strong word. I it doesn't do anything for me in terms of gameplay. It doesn't add anything extra. So I legitimately do not know the answer to this question. Uh, do you have any idea, Matt? I know that they they seem to get XP for a while, but I don't know. I don't know in the case of level 30 and a level 12. I know about like level 18 on a level 12. They still seem to get some XP, but I don't know if you're if your guys are already up to level 30 and you're doing like level 12 tasks. I don't know. I haven't cuz I haven't seen that. My, my my highest level follower is like level 22 because I also am not tremendously a huge fan of the mission table this time around. Uh it does not feel like an auto battler. It just kind of feels like a mission table. So yeah, I, th- I think there is some, some XP, and if you get the ones that have, obviously, bonus XP missions, which you said other than, yeah, that, that works better. Uh, but I, I think there's a certain point. So, so uh, here jumps Joe, so go ahead, Joe. I was going to say, so according to Liz in chat, which thank you, Liz, um, quests don't go gray on the mission table. They just stop showing up. So if it shows up, it gives something. So there you go. That is an answer to the question. There you go. Thank you, Liz. Yeah, I had no idea, honestly. So yeah, I have. Like I said, I I do them, but I do them like I I have not been like trying to level and and seeing really low level. It doesn't, and for the fact, it's probably why. Uh, because like I said, I haven't seen any missions that would be like that big a discrepancy. Yeah, and honestly, like that's one thing I do wish that they would do with the mission table if it's going to stick around. Which I'm really shocked that it has. Like I thought it served a really good pers- purpose in Warlords. I'm really surprised that it's stuck around this long, uh, just as a concept. Like I, I would love to know the reason for that, or, or why it's such. It's the one thing that seems to carry over when we abandon uh, so many other uh, expansion specific mechanics. But like, it's gotten way more nebulous. Like I feel like in Warlords, it was pretty clearly defined what you're doing, what you're getting, and when things stopped being useful to you. Uh, and now it's sort of caught in this nebulous place where it's kind of still around, but doesn't really well define it. I kind of hope that if they are going to keep it around, that they do give some clear definition to it. Like maybe explain during the process that anything that shows up is still good because I had no idea. Just just throwing that out there. All right. Anything else on that one? Nope. I think we're done. All right. Next one comes from Ouya. Man, I just started playing... LOL, Wild Rift, and it's pretty fun on mobile. Why is Blizzard not putting the Heroes of the Storm on mobile? I know they are working on mobile for their franchises. At least tease something for those not including Diablo Immortal. Do you think Blizzard will miss their chance to capitalize mobile MOBA markets to riot similarly to League of Legends on PC? I don't know. Um, I do think Blizzard is making more stuff for mobile than we know about. They're pretty constantly recruiting people at this point. And I think one of the reasons that they brought Vicarious Visions into the fold and made them a part of Blizzard is so they could get that that expertise at porting games to other platforms. Um, now, Vicarious Vision hasn't done a lot of porting of stuff to mobile, but they've done a ton of porting stuff to like other systems. Uh, and I think that that's one of the reasons that they're there is to work on ports of games. I think Blizzard is less likely to make an entirely new game the way that Wild Rift is not League of Legends. It's it's like League of Legends. It you it's recognizable, mm-hmm. but it's it's a different game on purpose. I don't know if Blizzard is going to want to do that kind of work for every franchise. Uh, and quite frankly, if they were going to do a game on on mobile, I honestly think StarCraft should be where they're looking because uh, RTS is pretty popular on mobile right now, and they've got StarCraft and StarCraft Two just sitting around. They just did the the StarCraft remaster a couple years back. It feels like a like really good time to get that on mobile without a ton of changing it. They don't have to do a lot to it, if that makes sense. Just get the, the Carbot people's uh, StarCraft you know skins and make that a StarCraft on mobile. Uh, they put those skins out for StarCraft Remastered. Um, they could certainly make a mobile version with them. Uh, I, I definitely think that that's some place to go. I honestly do think that, you know, I, I, I could see Heroes of the Storm working on mobile as well. I mean, you, you've got a point there. I think that would need some revamping. I think it would have to be a different game is the thing. I think you don't want to try and just port some of these games over to mobile. But, 
you know, Joe, Joe has a little bit of a better idea of the, the work involved in that. So I'll let him talk for a bit. Yeah. I mean, and honestly, like when it comes to mobile development, my, my knowledge is very limited. I don't do a whole, I have never done a whole lot with it. Uh, but I could definitely see a case for them taking some other IPs and at the very least making a spinoff. And I think Matt makes the, a really good point. Uh, League of Legends Wild Rift or, or LOL Wild Rift, whatever you want to call it is different than League of Legends, right? It's it's a different game. It's a recognizable IP, um, but it's not the same game. It doesn't have all of the same bells and whistles. doesn't have the same scope as the PC game. And that's that's fine. Um, but I think Matt makes a really good point. RTSs are, are really hot in mobile games right now, as are auto battlers. Um, why not look at that as possible avenues to generate... Uh, inroads for some of your other ips putting starcraft on mobile that makes a heck of a lot of sense to me but so does also taking back the old classic warcrafts and putting those on mobile as well or maybe even developing a brand new rts we've been asking for blizzard to sort of throw their hat back into that ring for a while now and i don't know if they ever will uh, maybe this is a really good opportunity for them to do that. Like Matt pointed out, they're doing a lot of aggressive hiring, and it seems like there is some uh, focus on mobile, not just Diablo Immortal, which, by the way, Diablo, regardless of how you feel about mobile games, it's a really good candidate for a mobile game. It doesn't require a whole lot of buttons. Uh, the way that touchscreens are now, it's way more intuitive than it used to be. We ain't playing Snake on a Nokia anymore, folks. Um, but I would love to see what they bring over there. I keep bringing out that they should do something with like wow and pet battles and i'm not saying pokemon go it but do something else with it you have this really robust number of really iconic battle pets why not do something like make their own version of pokemon tournament uh or do something uh that that leverages that in a recognizable way but uses it maybe like Maybe it's a pet fighting game instead or something like that. I think people would play that. And I know that there is a good contingent of fighting games on mobile platforms now, too. Um, it's been a long time since they've produced a flat out like platforming adventure game. Lost I'm just going to say it now. Vengeance of, of the Vanquished yeah. on mobile. You could do this. You could have, you know, Decimator, Algra front and center. It's straight. And, and I'm not I'm kind of joking, but I'm kind of serious here. Blizzard could do a, a mobile battler, like you mentioned, uh, like a an auto battler. They could do that real easy. They've got several IPs they could work on that one with. And I clearly they're thinking about the auto battler field. Yeah, yeah. And they obviously tried to do that this time around. I think sitting down and designing one from the ground up could really work. And it I could think really so too. be very popular. But uh, I'd love to see a Blizzard fighting game on mobile. I think that would be great. It would just be a really cool idea. Yeah. I, I don't know. Like, I want them to do more mobile stuff. And I'm not... Clearly, going- they want to, too. <laughs> I agreed. But it, regardless of how I feel about mobile gaming in general, which is it's something I generally don't do a whole lot of, I think it would be nice to see them venture into that and, or make ports or do whatever they have to do to sort of bring something to that. And I think there's a lot of potential for it. They could do a lot of good with a lot of that stuff. Uh, but yeah, I think that's... All I got to say on that one. Anything else? I I think to to go back to the question about whether or not they're going to miss their chance. I I don't know. I do think that your your point is valid enough that Blizzard kind of came into MOBA too late. Um, Heroes of Storm was very good, quite frankly. It was I played it and I liked it. Um, I really liked playing a healer in it. That was a big surprise to me was that I actually liked healing in uh in Heroes of the Storm. I liked pretty much every healer they came out with, but I loved Malfurion and I kept going back to him. and I, I don't have an answer to you as to why, but I, I think there's a lot to be said for that field. And Heroes itself is really still a very good game. Yeah, I, I wish, know that's. It's, I wish it wasn't in maintenance mode. Yeah, I mean the development is certainly less than it was, but the game itself is very good. Uh, there's nothing wrong with Heroes of the Storm. Could it find a new lease of life on mobile? I think you should probably. Yeah, sure. Why not? Um, I don't know that. You could just run Heroes of the Storm on mobile because, like I said, LOL Wild Rifts is not the same game as LOL. Um, and my God, I hate using that abbreviation because it sounds like I'm like having some kind of just call it League. It's fine. Yeah, League is not the same as Wild Rift. They, they're obviously clearly related. They have you know the one is designed after the other, but they're different. One of them is is made tailor made for a mobile experience. 
I don't know that Blizzard wants to sink t- development time into a completely new game that is Mobile Heroes of the Storm. I don't know if there's enough interest in that. But I definitely would not mind it, and I definitely think it could work. So, yeah, we'll see. I mean, we're at a time period where game companies are all looking for new markets and new strategies. So this could be something they do, or maybe not. I don't know. But I do think that they absolutely could do something really cool there. Agreed. All right. Uh, Our next question comes from Riptides. What if, after Shadowlands, we end up in either the far future or distant past of Azeroth? Not so much for the change of scenery, which would be cool, but rather to get past the the we-are-the-most-important-champion-who-ever-existed weightiness that constantly follows us at this point. Eight expansions in, question mark, uh, i.e. a world in which no one knows or cares about us. Could be a reset without resetting your character. It's actually not a bad idea. I don't know if that'll ever happen, but I, I kind of get where you're coming from. I don't. I'm going to be up front. I don't have a problem with people liking my, thinking my character is a badass. <laughs> I've never had a problem with this. I don't get what your problem is. When I show up, they should be like, oh, it's that person. I've done a lot of stuff. I have done, you know, I've been playing this game since, you know, 2004. I killed Ragnaros twice. I, you know, seriously, they should, in fact, all be excited that I'm there. I am going to solve the problem. I'm the hero. Yes. Why is this a problem? I don't. It'd be like if Superman showed up and was like, hey, go kill some rats for me. You know, could you? Could you just go kill some rats? Or, hey, it's Batman. That's great. I, I've got a problem with plagued grain. So could you could just, like grab some grain boxes for me? That'd be cool, Batman. Like, I no, be excited. I'm here. Uh, the guy who is the cause of and solution to all of Azeroth's problems has arrived. Uh, so that's me. I, I don't, but I get a lot of players <laughs> do seem to have a problem with this. I don't get you. I, one of the things I hated was wandering around running like level 40 dungeons where nobody knew who I was. I like people knowing who I am and me being sent for personally and Kings and war chiefs all being like, Oh, thank God that person showed up. That's not a problem for me. That is in fact, part of the power fantasy of these games that I enjoy, but I do get that other people have a problem with it. And if you wanted to, have a reset without having a reset, then yeah, that is one way to do it. You could basically, if you go, the problem with that though is sort of the same problem we have with the Ultima games. I don't know if you guys remember the Ultima games. You probably don't because unlike me, you weren't sealed in a tomb for a thousand years. Ultima Online is still running. I'm sorry, what? Yeah, but still, come on, man. You know full well that the Ultima (laughs) games. Yeah. But you played as a character who eventually became quote unquote the Avatar. And there was like a worldwide philosophy slash religion built around the actions of the Avatar. And thus, as games went forward and you kept playing the Avatar, it got weirder and weirder that people didn't know who you were. When you were like King Arthur and Jesus wrapped into one guy, and yet you'd be gone 200 years and you'd come back and everyone would be like, oh, yeah, the Avatar. Yeah, that's great. Anyway, it's like, uh, excuse me, I, I, you, you literally have churches built to me. Now we've we never got there in WoW. We don't have like you know you don't go to to Stormwind and find the Temple of You. So I don't think I don't think it's that big a problem. But I do get what you're saying. It gets it, after a while. You're like, why am you know why is everything on my shoulders? Why is my character always the 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 cause of and solution to everyone's problems? I I do get that that it's a problem for some. Place. I mean I think it would be a really cool experience to maybe have that happen for a little bit where it's like yeah you wind up somewhere where nobody's heard of you or you wind up so far in the future that you know you are a whisper of a breath of a legend right like We kind of have had that though haven't we I mean Burning Crusade nobody had heard of you because they had been cut off for like 30 years and Mists of Pandaria and Warlords yeah. of Draenor and Legion and yeah. Well, not Legion. The yeah, Legion no, we first. show up. We show up, and it's like, oh, hi, Mountain. Hey, how you doing? Who are you? Oh, you're a yeah, champion. That's least, that's nice. There still are people in Legion who know who you are. Sure, but uh, I mean, I, I but I, I'm just saying, like, I understand sort of the idea of like every now and then it's nice to have this thing where sort of that trope of your character has to prove themselves again is a thing because after after a while. Yeah, there's there can be this feeling of, eh, you know, it's just I've always been this super powerful thing for like, you know, X number of years. And now it's kind of getting boring. But I don't think time travel is the right answer. And the only reason I say that is because we literally already had kind of that happen with Warlords. Uh, it was alternate history universe thing um it was an episode of sliders but nonetheless it was an episode of sliders 100 percent um but i keep coming back to this azeroth can be infinitely large 
it can be this this thing that it can be as many continents, as many places, as many cultures and empires and uh, countries as they want. It's completely mutable. They could do at any point in time, like we get spit out of the Shadowlands, we, you know, seal up that rift and we're thrown back into Azeroth. Maybe we don't wind up back in Kalimdor or the Eastern Kingdoms. Maybe we don't wind up in the, the, the Broken Isles. Maybe we don't end up in Northrend. Maybe we wind up somewhere else. Maybe we wind up in a place that nobody's ever heard of these places or it's been years or decades or generations since they've heard of, oh yeah, Lordaeron or this or that or the third. And you can still have that feeling of these people have no idea who we am. Sweet. <laughs> like you can prove yourself. You can learn new things. You can sort of go out and do these uh, you can do new and, and more heroic things, and yeah, you'll probably have to kill 10 rats again. But that's an easy way to do it without having to do time travel, without having to do a reset. I'm sorry, I want to go to the land of rats where they hire you to kill 10 adventurers who are going to kill rats. This isn't cabbages, this is people! Yeah. Uh, one of the things I, I also want is vermin as playable characters. But that's I, re- I digress. Um, I do think that to a certain degree, your idea is interesting, that we could do an expansion where... Through one means or another, we hit a kind of reset button where it's not, you know, nobody knows who you are. That's There's various ways you could do it. Joe's way could work. You could do another, you know, here we are on Zoroth. Nobody knows who we are on Zoroth. No one's ever heard of us here. Um, you could do going to another continent. You could do, you could do it time travel. I I feel like there's a lot of resistance to time travel in WoW. Uh, players don't, players get confused pretty easy when it comes to, mm-hmm. to time travel. Not n- I think some of us love it, and some of us had no problem with like warlords. We got it. It wasn't time travel. It was an alternate universe that happened to be on a different temporal scale because the portal that they used to get there didn't just travel through time. And it also traveled through space. So it picked an alternate dimension, and then it went back in time in that alternate dimension. Uh, so we were in the past of that Draenor. Ironically, that meant we then made the future of that Draenor, which we then later on went to again. Uh, which I thought was pretty funny. The fact that I find the Maghar to be hilarious time loop wise, uh, because the entire Maghar faction exists in the form they did because we traveled back into their past. Yep. So, but that amused me. I, I do think there's lots of ways you could do it. And I do think that it'd be kind of interesting to do it. I don't want them to like have to do that every expansion, but they have kind of done it. Most expansions. Now we've, we've seen a lot of people don't know who you are. I would like, and also keep in mind, I think it'd be kind of cool to do an expansion where they do know who you are and where everybody knows who you are. You are Norm walking into Cheers, except Cheers is on fire and there's monsters. Uh, I think you could do both. And I think it would be cool to do both. And the other thing to to keep in mind is like the reason that this is a, a, a really interesting topic is because they have made the statement that time doesn't travel or work are past the same in the Shadowlands as it does on the prime material plane. And so they haven't done anything with that yet. Uh, they haven't pulled on that particular thread, but it's a setup for, they can do whatever they want with that. It could be exactly that time walks backwards and we wind up in the past. It could be that time doesn't pass at all. And suddenly we're 20 years older when we get back or the other way around where we get back and the world has moved on without us. Uh, we've been in this eternal conflict that just sort of existed in this pocket where, you know, it's a thousand years for us, 20 years in the in, in real world, you know, kind of like what happened with a thousand years of war in that story. Uh, yeah. Or they could just assume we're dead. Or they could just assume we're dead again. Yeah. Like, we come, enough time has passed and the, la- the last anybody heard of us, we were literally going to the land of the dead and then no one's heard from us since. So we're dead now. That's what they think happened. There's lots of possibilities. An expansion where everybody thinks you're some weird, like, oh, I've heard the legend of so-and-so, but you can't be that person. They died fighting for the you know, the Horde. And you're like, no, I didn't die. I'm still alive. I'm right here in front of you talking. Oh, no, that don't be silly. You must be his son or grand. Oh, I'm, I'm me. But you I know, was told he died. We never yeah, saw you, them again. Yeah, you could do like lots of stuff with that. So. Yeah. All right. And then we have one last question, unless there's anything else you want to add there. I think we... we we did pretty well in terms sure. of okay. that's fair. I always got to ask, always got to ask. Uh, and okay, here's a question for Joe and Matt. What are the best games of the past, past 10 years and what should wow have stolen from them? I mean, 
That's a real good question. What do you think? Yeah. The, what do you think the best games of the last ten years, besides Kingdom of Amalur? Um, well, I mean, Kingdom of Amalur, you should you don't WoW doesn't have to worry about stealing anything from it. Uh, <laughs> seriously, Kings of Amalur feels like a single player WoW at times, but yeah, Kings of Amalur is is a really good game. Um, I think the thing is, you, when you say the past ten years, it's twenty twenty one, so you have to think back to twenty eleven. So a lot of games that I would have put on this list don't count because they're not from ten years ago. Like the original Dragon Age mm-hmm. is from 2008. So that's a thing to make you feel nice and old. <laughs> uh, Kings of Amalur would definitely be on my list, I think. Um, I think in general, there's a lot of open world games out over the past decade. And those open world games, I, can, I mean, we can sit here. Obviously, I think Cyberpunk 2077 is great. I really liked Assassin's Creed Odyssey. I liked Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Um, I'm a uh, big fan of well, a lot of those kind of open world games. I'm just going to throw it. You can keep going. I just want to throw it out. Audio Luke, you, you got it in barely before the Cyberpunk 2077 reference. Good job. Please continue, Matt. What did you say? <laughs> he said in before. <laughs> uh, there, there's a ton of, I think a lot of open world games that are single player games have something to offer World of Warcraft in terms of the idea of stuff that isn't a main quest, but is something to go explore and find out and we don't know what, like, one of the things that comes with is we don't know what this is. Uh, Valhalla and Cyberpunk both did this. There's places on the map that are not major quests. They're just little side things. And you go there, and they can be weird, and they can have very little impact on the story, and they're just one-and-done moments. And because they're one-and-done moments, they can be weird and fun and diverting. Um, and sometimes they can be really dumb. Like, the one that comes to mind in Valhalla is the Degolas one. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to go into too much detail, but this this one archer decides that he's never going to bathe again, and he's going to he's going to keep manure around and d- dip his arrows in it and just be horribly disgusting because it makes people be afraid more afraid of him as a warrior. And you can dunk him in a lake, and then he's like, "Oh no, my precious bleep! I've lost my warrior stench." And you're like, "Yeah, yeah, shut up." <laughs> And it's like, yeah, it's 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 a dumb quest, but it's also funny, and it's it's not serious, and it's not meant to be serious. And I think Wow Wow has got its sense of humor. Wow's got a tongue in cheek aspect, but it would be kind of cool if they if they had these like little one note things that could be funny, could be serious, but but they're the kind of stuff that they originally used to have, like the 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 Ballad of Sully Baloo that they used to have. That was an example of something drawn from real life that was a little off off the beaten path type moment. I think WoW should look into bringing more of that stuff back. That's That'd be one thing I would come up with, and I'll let you go, and then I'll come back in. So I'm going to go with something that is straight out of Diablo 3, uh, as well as uh, EverQuest 2, and that's the idea of imbuing. I like the idea of being able to take an effect from an item and through some means either make it active or add it to another item so that if you find something particularly special you can kind of hold on to it in some capacity and whether it is you replace the current effect of something with it or you have to make some exchange that's something i would love to see as a mechanic maybe found a way to be introduced into wow i don't think it'll ever happen because i think it's going to be it would be an absolute absolute nightmare to balance but it's a cool idea it's a cool idea of like this really cool looking sword i want to keep using it and i can transmog but it also has this one effect that i really want to carry with me but this other effect is so much better maybe i could just marry the two in some way or or whatever uh the other thing that i really want them to bring back is one thing that i mean it's been around forever it's been around from diablo and and several other games i want set bonuses back I thought that they were really neat. I thought that they were a unique carrot in the gearing that added an extra flavor uh, of imp- or layer of importance to having pieces. And it was not just, hey, I really need this one piece to drop because it's better stats and it's the only thing. It was your set pieces. And so finishing that set felt good. It felt important. And sometimes those effects were well worthwhile. And sometimes they weren't. Uh, and I understand that those were their own particular version of Nightmare to Balance. But it's something I always miss. And I just thought it was a really cool mechanic. So I, I can have more, but I'm going to have to think about it. Would you have any others? Oh, yeah, quite a few. Um. One of the things that I, I 
been thinking about in terms of like modern games and older games and, and stuff World of Warcraft could learn from and, and so on. This one's really cosmetic and it's really interestingly cosmetic. Armor dies. Yeah, armor dies. Diablo 3 has armor dies. Yep. And I get why you couldn't have that in World of Warcraft in the same capacity, but whenever an armor set has multiple offshoot colors and you can't get those colors, like for instance, the there's a red version of Wrath, the Warrior Tier 2 set. It only exists on NPCs. You can't get it. You can have the, the regular version of Wrath, and you can have kind of an off green, like a kind of greenish color set of Wrath. And that's it. The red set, you can't get. But that, that piece exists. I feel like you should be able to unlock, if there's a color variant of a piece of armor, you should be able to unlock it. Yeah, in some way. Yeah, and I, I find it frustrating and maddening um, when you when you have colored variants and you can't get them. Or you, only one faction can get them, which I find even more annoying. Uh, because it's like, okay, I, I guess I picked the wrong faction, since I don't get to use that color variant that the other faction gets to use. I, and I'm not saying the same. It's not the same thing as models. Like I get that sometimes the other faction will have different models, and I'm fine with that. But if both factions can wear the same piece of armor, except one faction gets it in red, and the other faction gets it in in gold, that's just weird to me. And that feels like I feel like there should be a way to unlock different color variants of the same pieces. That's one thing. Like I feel like armor dying in Diablo really spoiled me, and I was like always somewhat upset i didn't have it in wow even though again i understand why it wouldn't work in wow yeah i mean there's a lot of stuff i could say that would be really cool uh to sort of like carry over into wow but the problem is a lot of those things are single player uh and implementing them into an mmo is really difficult because of again balancing and having multi multiple players um so like, there's a lot of really cool ideas that a lot of, uh, you know, games do, but it was, it's just, I don't know if they'd be applicable. So, uh, the only thing that I, I would like to see a little more of as far as, uh, maybe refining mechanics is, uh, wow started doing telegraphs not too long ago. Um, and when I mean that, I mean like actual like ground visuals and things to indicate when something is going to happen. And it wasn't very long ago that there was none of that in the game, but it still needs to be refined a little bit more. Um, I kind of hope that WoW would also look at some of the other games' accessibility options and see what they could sort of kind of borrow from those as well. Like color. Yeah, they, they made efforts uh, in the past few years, but they, they have definitely more uh, yeah i agree on that yeah and uh, i'm not just saying like the color modes and stuff those are great but there's like a uh, lots of stuff with like lights and sounds that they could probably do uh to make it better so um but yeah i think that's really all i have for that because otherwise like i said it's just going to be stuff that's single player and probably wouldn't work too well in wow yeah i think that um one thing i will say is that uh they did a lot to change leveling in this most recent um expansion they, they redressed legend leveling up and down in a completely new way. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean that I've lost my interest in mentoring. And they have... Oh, yeah, we could go back with that City of Heroes all yeah, over they, again. They've got systems in place now where you can like do quests with that you've already completed, and you can do stuff with people who are lower level than you, and you can be brought down or they can be brought up. I, I definitely feel like there's more to be done there, though, in terms of importing that. And... I mean, One thing that City of Heroes had that that no MMO really has has gone with as much was player generated content. Yeah, and that's something I don't know how it would work, but I'd really love it if WoW at least took a stab in that direction. Yeah, and I don't know, I don't know if WoW is too big to let yeah, that happen. It, that might be. And also, I should point out I'm cheating here because City of Heroes came out in like 2004, and I think it ended. Yeah, so and it ended well before 10 years ago. You know, so I almost feel like bringing them up is sort of cheating here, and I shouldn't have. But you know, I, uh, if we're gonna, if we're gonna like, if instead of doing an auto battler, maybe next time you do, you do one like a weird mission table thing, make it an isometric Baldur's Gate ripoff instead. <laughs> like, why not have a Baldur's Gate game within? Just, wow, just go the just go the raid Shadow Legends route. Just just make that the mission table. It's fine. I don't like. <laughs> All right, but I think that's all we have, unless there's anything else you want to talk about before we call it good. No, I think that's it. All right, well, 
Blizzard Watch is made possible due to the generous contributions at patreon.com slash Blizzard Watch. Your continued support means this podcast lighting community is able to thrive and grow. Blizzard Watch supporters enjoy exclusive benefits like early access to the podcast, a better chance at having your questions answered on our podcast or the queue, and an ads free site experience. Uh, thank you very much, Joe. Again, guys, if you want to send a question into the show and possibly get a naked 8x10 glossy of Joe, because I've got a few, I don't. I have no naked 8x10 glossies of Joe. He just won't let me have them. It's he true. stops me every time I show up. Matt, Matt but, just refuses to pay for them. I can't help it. But regardless, if you would like to send a question to the show and think about that, uh, <laughs> you send it to podcast at blizzardwatch.com. Just imagine Joe has roses in his teeth. Oh, shush. Uh, <laughs> Subject line, uh, podcast with Blizzard Watch, so we know it's for this show. Or you can use our Discord server, our Patreon Q and Podcast Questions channel, or our Q Questions channel. Again, make sure you tell us what show you want the question to be for. We, we look for questions for both this show and Lore Watch. Um, we're going to do a Lore Watch this week coming, so feel free to throw some questions in there now, and you can get some get some possible answers. Uh, although we do have like four or five questions to answer from last time, because we only covered two. Three. Um, three. It was three. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, but but you know, thank you guys very much for being here with us. We love doing these podcasts, uh, and yeah, we'll be back next week. 